TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu asserts that Jerusalem's enemies understand full well that it is not a good idea to launch a war against Israel. Iran and its regional allies marked their version of Jerusalem Day, as part of which the Islamic Republic proclaimed its resolute conviction that the annihilation of the Jewish state is fast approaching. The United States says that it does everything to deter the RGC from attacking U.S. forces in Syria after Iranian-backed groups once again target an American installation in the war-torn country. A tense quiet prevails in and around Israel today as the anti-Israeli axis, which is led by the Islamic Republic of Iran, marked its annual Global Jerusalem Day, during which the enemies of Jerusalem proclaimed their commitment to the annihilation of the Jewish state. The global event, which was initiated in 1979 in Iran shortly after the Islamic Revolution, coincides with the fourth Friday of Ramadan, as Muslims flock to Jerusalem today with police recording over 130,000 worshippers attending prayers at the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which is situated on the grounds of the Temple Mount. In preparation to contend with the masses flocking to the Israeli capital, Jerusalem District Police bolstered its presence throughout the city with over 2,000 officers, border policemen, and other reinforcements, particularly in contentious area in East Jerusalem and the Old City of Jerusalem. And while many challenges arose to Israel's security forces, efforts to quell extraordinary events from getting out of hand have been regarded as successful. <laughs> שזה המון, 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 ואולי בעיקר בזכות הצוות שיושב פה והשוטרים שלא נמצאים פה. אני יודע לקרוא פנים. ואני יודע גם לזהות שקשה, אבל אני רואה גם את הקשה וגם את השליחות שנמצאת אצל כל אחד ואחת מכם. אז קודם כל, הערכה רבה. אנחנו לקראת הסוף, אבל לא, לא בסוף עדיין. While maintaining security in Jerusalem, IDF, ISA or Shin Bet and Border Police Special Operations Units conducted extensive counter-terror activity in the West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria overnight as part of the relentless war on terror within the framework of Operation Ways Breaker. During the course of the operational activities, a total of five suspected terror operatives were apprehended. No injuries were reported to the Israeli forces. In tandem, as a precautionary measure amid a heightened level of security alert, Israel's airspace near the northern border with Lebanon and Syria and the southern border with the Gaza Strip has been closed to civilian flights until Sunday evening. The Israel Airports Authority issued a statement in which it stressed that the closed airspace extends to six kilometers from the respective borders with Syria, Lebanon and the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip. Meanwhile, as a result, senior Hamas officials in Gaza have scaled back their movements and public appearances for a seeming fear of Israeli preemptive strikes, including targeted killings. Moreover, Hamas, the Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad and other smaller Palestinian factions in the Gaza Strip have raised their preparedness to the highest level of alert despite the prevailing quiet. It is important to know that while the IDF Military Intelligence Directorate has warned Jerusalem's top political brass that a war remains more imminent than calm in recent days, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu does not believe that Israel's enemies are genuinely keen on launching war against Israel at this moment in time. Speaking to Israel's leading conservative broadcast channel 14, Premier Netanyahu stressed, however, that while he views the IDF Military Intelligence Directorate's assessment as somewhat exaggerated, nonetheless, Israel continually prepares for an all-out conflagration. I think there's an effort to do this, but I'll 
The Israeli leader went on to recount Israel's extensive activities against terror elements, including Hamas, Hezbollah, and Iran in Lebanon, Syria, and the Gaza Strip this past weekend, reiterating Jerusalem's warning once more that the enemies of the Jewish state should not err about correlating between Israel's internal debate over its judicial reform and its ability to unite and fight against its adversaries as one united people. אז אנחנו פועלים בכל הזירות הללו, ואנחנו מראים לאויבינו, אם חשבתם אחרת, אם חשבתם שהוויכוח הפנימי ימנע מאיתנו להתייצב ברגע המבחן כאיש אחד, טעיתם וטעיתם בענק. Prime Minister Netanyahu further asserted during the 52-minute long interview to the Patriots program at Channel 14 that he is under the impression that Jerusalem's enemies understand full well that it is not a good idea to launch a war against Israel. I think that they understand that it is not a good idea to open a war against Israel. It may be that they are dead. It may be that they are dead on the country of Israel, that is dead, 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 dead. הם מגלים, ומגלים את זה כל יום מחדש, שלא כך הם פני הדברים, יש פה מדינה חזקה, יש פה עם חזק, יש פה צבא חזק. In contrast to Netanyahu's assertion, however, Iran's foreign ministry released an official statement on its Twitter account earlier today, in which it insists, quote, the waning existence of Israel is no longer able to deceive the world. No conspiracy will save the Zionist regime. Moreover, the Iranian foreign ministry proclaimed that Quds, the Arabic term for holy, which is a Quranic reference to Jerusalem, belongs to the Palestinians. The Iranian statement was published as tens of thousands of Iranian supporters of the Ayatollah regime flooded the streets of Tehran and elsewhere to mark the so-called Quds Day, or Ruz Johania Quds in Persian, proclaiming support for the demise of Israel and the United States. Among others, Iranian Minister of Intelligence Ismail Hatib proclaimed that the whole Muslim world stood behind the Palestinian terror groups who seek Israel's annihilation. Jahan Islam hemayatash az muqawamat mitune rah piruzi ro baraye millat mazlum Palestine nazdiktar. Alongside the Quds Day rallies which were held in Iran, Iranian proxies and subsidiaries held similar events in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Yemen, and the Gaza Strip. Meanwhile, in Uzbekistan, the four ministers of China, Russia, Iran, and Pakistan held a security situation meeting in which they discussed matters related to their common interests vis-à-vis -vis Afghanistan. During the four-way meeting with China's King Gong, Russia's Sergei Lavrov, Pakistan's Hina Rabani Har and Iran's Hussein Amir Abdullahian, the latter proclaimed that what Afghanistan requires is regional solutions rather than Western interference, while further seizing the opportunity to blame the United States for all that is amiss in Afghanistan, where Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State's Wilayat Khurasan have regained a substantive foothold under the Taliban's auspices. It is important to know that since the Biden administration ordered NATO's withdrawal from Afghanistan in August of 2021, U.S. Central Command was forced to alter its threat assessments, with CENTCOM Commander General Michael Kurilla labeling Iran and the Afghan ISIS Khorasan as the greatest threat to U.S. security in the Middle East. Uh, our greatest risk is with Iran right now. That is why it is our number one priority to deter them. Mm -hmm. And then I would tell you it's uh, the violent extremist organizations that we are seeing, the ISIS Khorasan group in Afghanistan. And what we're doing is we're applying our resources to both of those efforts. Uh, we look at those also through our partners to be the regional constructs to deter Iran. And again, it's increasing our capability and intelligence inside of Afghanistan. It is worth explaining that since Iran's RGC Quds Force Commander, Major General Qasem Soleimani, was killed in an American drone strike in early 2020, Major General Ismail Kani, who previously commanded the RGC Quds Force in Afghanistan, succeeded him. Since then, the Islamic Republic of Iran ratcheted up its efforts to deepen its influence amongst Afghanistan's Shiite population, from which it recruits thousands of Afghans to its Fatimiyun brigades, which the RGC has deployed to Syria's Der Ezzor governorate near Al Mayadin and Al Bukamal, and from which numerous attacks have been directed at U.S. installations, 
including on a number of occasions these past three weeks, the latest of which was recorded on April 10th, when U.S. Central Command's Operation Inherent Resolve announced that it responded to an indirect fire attack in the Deir Ezzor region in Syria by RGC-linked militants. Meanwhile, Pentagon Press Secretary Brigadier General Pat Ryder highlighted last night that the United States continues to do everything to deter Iranian-directed attacks against U.S. forces in Syria. Um, in terms of deterrence, again, we're going to continue to do everything that we need to do at a time and place of our choosing to ensure that we're deterring uh, and safeguarding our, our folks. Asked further whether the United States was aware of reports implicating Iran of smuggling weaponry into Syria under the guise of humanitarian assistance, General Ryder said the following. I don't have anything to provide from here other than, again, we, you know, as, as evidenced by the uh, IRGC-aligned groups uh, in Syria, we know that Iran conducts malign activities within Syria. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. If you're blessed by our productions and would like to help support TV7 Israel's ongoing operations, which are exclusively donation-based, please consider making a financial contribution. You can do so at www.tv7israelnews.com. Separately, we would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan, wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and Mevorach, and God willing, we'll see you again on Monday at the same time.